Make no mistake about it, tip downs increase your ice fishing productivity by at least double. In this video, we'll show you how to effectively use them, but we'll also teach you how to create your own so that you can add them into your own ice fishing arsenal. Join the BSO team today as we catch perch and we catch pike on the early hard water all along the St. Lawrence River. The action is coming your way. Same one you got your big pike on, dude. You ready? <clears throat> yep, I'm ready. Feel them? Got it. Okay, buddy. Let's see what we got here. Feel like a pike or a perch, or what do you oh, think? This is more like a perch. More like a perch? I see the line coming. Oh, slide them up. Oh, my goodness. Big one. Holy smokes. Is that ever a slammer perch? Dude. You are on fire today. Big pike, big perch. That thing's incredible. Yeah, look who's look at look at look at hey Alex. Look who's look who's easing his way over here too. The seagull, Randy Pound. He wants to come over and see what all your tricks are. <laughs> <laughs> he's momentarily he's gonna be hovering right over the top of your hole. <laughs> Up that fish. Get him by the lip. There you go. Let's that see that guy. Put him right up here, dude. I want a whole bucket of those. Yeah, dude. man. That is a stud perch right there. Good job, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that right there is a hell of a perch. <laughs> anyway, you cut the mustard. Look at that. And he's all advanced. He's got his fin up. He's pissed off. He came in looking for the, for the bait, and he got it. <laughs> Kind of a loose line on this one too, but so we'll see. We'll see what we've got. I don't feel him. Oh, he's there. Nice fish too. Nice fish. He's hooked on the bottom of the hole. Look at that. Beautiful perch. Just a beauty. I'll get the line off of there. Get that out of here. Look at that Aberdeen hook. It's right up in the Right up in the end, we don't have to do it made our life easy. anything to get that one undone. And uh, there's a nice yellow perch, too. We'll throw him right there. It looks to me, Frank, as though <coughs> we can uh, re-thread. We'll re-thread this minnow. Now what we're going to do, he was hooked it near the head, so when I re-thread this minnow, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a tail hook on him, so that he's, uh... Still he's double hook him, correct? Still double hook him. But you're going to do the tail portion of the, of the that's, bait. That's what I did, I just moved the hook a little bit to a new part of the minnow. Sure. That wasn't, uh, beaten up. Alright, we'll get one more, one more bait here. That's the one we want right there. Come on right in. And we'll tidy this guy up again. We're gonna put that hook through, double it, pop it right through. There it is, threaded on, a pair of them. We're gonna send that right back down the hole. Get off the line here. Clean the tip down. Perfect. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take you through a complete rig of how we set up a tip down. And I'm going to show you kind of the evolution of what we've gone through here at Bill Safe Outdoors and Hard Water Ice Guides and, and what we've kind of landed on over the years so that hopefully it cuts some of that learning curve for everybody that's watching this video. Let's come down here to the table. The first thing that I'm going to show you is a chunk of pipe insulation right here. And all we're going to do with this pipe insulation is we're just going to cut it. I'm going to cut it into a few different pieces right here. Just like that. And then I'm going to go right through and I'm going to chop this up. And you'll see what that's for here in a little bit. But that's, uh, that's an important part of what we're going to be doing going to be doing today so we're going to just leave that that styrofoam right there now this is an old style tip down rod this is what we originally started with 
and you can see how limber it is. It's extremely limber. Caught a million perch on this. Here's your double dropper hook system that we've got set up on this. But the problem that we had with this particular rod is that we know we hand line those perch when we start to raise them off the bottom. So our friends and our customers would throw this light rod onto the ice to go to hand lining and pretty soon the tips were fractured and we were constantly fixing this rod because although it was good to catch perch, it wasn't durable enough to take the abuse of day in and day out ice fishing. So we're going to set that one aside <clears throat> and we're going to show you what we've gone to. Here's the very same rod. You can get either Schoolie or you can get HT. This one happens to be an HT setup. Comes with a wooden handle, comes with a reel. And uh, what we do is we've wound, you can see the red line that's on there. We've wound that with uh, 20 pound test Cajun Red. I'll use either 17 or 20 pound test Cajun Red and I wind it with that because I want to be able to see that line on the ice. Even on those ice blind days when the wind is really whipping the snow, that red, that red line sticks out like a sore thumb. Now what I've done is I've taken a number two snap and uh, Billy Rafferty has tied that on with an improved clinch, a trilene knot, and he's put on the bottom of that what I'm going to show you right here. There's a three pack of Eagle Claw Bell Sinkers. Half ounce is what you want. Most of the fishing that we're doing with these tip downs is sub 25 feet. So half ounce bell sinker is absolutely perfect for that. So now we've got that bell sinker in position on that snap and that's the way that that's rigged. We're going to, we're going to pull this tensioning pin out of the reel and we're going to take just a little bit more line off this tip down rod so that we have some extra line to play with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a number four eagle claw hook. You can use either eagle claw or you can use bear paw, but you'll notice you've got the multicolored spinners and the beads. We think that provides a little extra attraction to the perch when they're coming in. So that's what we like to rig our, our baits with. It's not a necessity. We're going to cut the top of this open. We're going to shake these out onto the table. Boom. That's done. Now, in order to set this up, what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair of those hooks. We don't want that much line hanging down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double this over. Remember this, guys. Perch are not really line shy. That's why we can get away with running 17 and 20 pound tests as a main carrying line. I'm, I'm doubling that and I'm doing an overhand knot. Pull that under. And I'm going to snug that so that I have a new loop. Now, two important pieces that you have to have. One's tied around my neck right here is a pair of clippers for being out on the ice. I'm going to clip that tag. So now I've shortened that to about half the distance that it was. Notice that this is a number four Aberdeen hook with a long shank. That shank is important because we thread the perch minnow up that hook and when he completely ingests it, it gives you something to get on with your needle nose pliers and actually work that out of the fish's mouth. So that's the way we set that up. Let's take a chartreuse. We'll take a chartreuse and we'll do exactly the same thing. I'll show that to you again. We're going to double it over. Double that over. We're going to push. We're going to push that under. This is what we do on these windy days or when it's not appropriate to be on the ice. We get in the basement <clears throat> and we work on all this stuff so that when the days come to fish, we're 100% prepared. There we've got that, but we've got that uh, shortened up. So now we've got a pair of those ready to go. We're going to take our line and we're going to do a simple, simple setup. All we're going to do is we're going to come about 10 inches up off the bottom of that because remember, this dropper line is going to be hanging down like so and want that just a few inches off the bottom. So we're going to double that line over, we're going to double that Cajun Red over and we're going to do the very same thing. We're going to put a loop in that and it can be rather small, it doesn't have to be a big loop. Double, double that over and we do an overhand loop. Boom, just like that. Now, 
we're going to do a slip knot. That's all we do. We're going to push that through, push that through the loop that we made in the hook, and we're going to bring our hook and spinner back through the cage in red on the main line. We're going to pull the beads through, pull the spinner through. This is just such a fast and easy way. Now watch that's a slip knot. Watch it cinch down. Boom, it's done. Now check it out. Look at that hook. It's hanging about three inches off the bottom. That's our lower hook. So now we're in position with that. Pull a little more line off this. Now we're going to come about 10 to 12 inches up above that. And we're going to tie another loop. I always put the bell sinker on first because I want it in position so that I can gauge. Now I'm going to take the chartreuse spinner. That chartreuse number four hook, again, I'm going to put the cage, cage in red through the eyelet and that monofilament on the hook. Then I'm going to bring the hook back through, pull my whole apparatus through, watch it cinch down again. You can see it's a slip right there. Slip knot, boom. Now, if you hang that baby up and down, <clears throat> that's what it's going to look like. You're going to have a hook down here on the bottom. A hook up here on the top and they're going to be about 10 inches apart now when we thread that minnow on we're in absolutely perfect condition now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to crank this reel up until it's about in this position we want that sinker to come in and hit the handle about an inch to two inches above the base of the rod all right once we get that in position we're going to tighten the reel back down we're going to put our set pin back in the reel and we're going to bring this bell sinker down against the base. Now, you raid your daughter's and the wife's cosmetic closet, and you get these uh, you get these hair bands right here. Black's perfect. Any color will work. You know, it doesn't make any difference. Now, what we do is we hold that bell sinker there, and we put this over the top once. We do a half twist in it, put it over a second time. That keeps everything nice and neat so that when it goes in your bucket, everything stays perfectly in order. When we get to our fishing location in the morning, we simply pull that out from underneath. And look at the hair tie stays right on the back end of that uh, fishing rod. So it's always in position to put back in at the end of the day. We're going to drop that sinker there. We're going to put it right back in, put the hair tie over the top of it. Now the very first thing that we did and you'll notice with a rod like this 24 25 inch rod these uh, hooks are down in this position your hooks are going to line up somewhere between the tip of the rod and the base now that foam that we cut earlier we're going to take that piece of foam or a cork if you got a wife that's a wine drinker steal some corks put it on there we're going to cover the tip of the hook with that piece of pipe insulation we're going to cover the tip of that hook with some pipe insulation now when this goes into the bucket it cannot tangle with any of the other rods here's a homemade base that i'm going to show you this is, happens to be made out of pine and then it's sealed with uh, polyurethane and painted brown here on the bottom it folds down on this hinge that's right here you can see that the bottom of that board is chamfered it's beveled so that when it sets up, it's got a little bit of a slant to it, just like this that helps it stay in position. The last thing that we did on the setup of this is we took some aluminum or some brass rod, some brass pin material, cut it with a hacksaw, um, about four inches, four and a half inches. It has to be long enough where it can nest in the top of that groove, in the top of that board, so that it's in a tip-down fashion. The easiest way to determine where the balance point is before you add any weight, just set this rod on your finger until you find where the balance point is, and that's the spot that you should drill for the pin. So take a piece of pin, drill this through in a press so that it's nice and straight, drill it just under the size of the pin that you're using, mount this into a vise, and gently with a ball-peen hammer, tap that pin in the uh, wood will swell 
You don't need to put any glue on it. That pin will stay there. It's not going to come out of that wood, even as it expands and contracts, because you've driven an oversized pin into an undersized hole. Now, that tip-down rod is completely ready to go. You can manufacture it on your own. There's absolutely nothing to it. You've got the two hooks set up. You've got your foam on the hooks. You've got your sinker underneath the hairband here at the bottom. The base folds up. It goes in your bucket. The rod goes in your bucket. Super simple to carry 10 to 12 of those setups in any tip-down application. What's the benefit of those? As you've seen us talk in a lot of our videos in the past, big perch will come in and only the biggest perch can ingest that minnow on that number four hook. So if it's a smaller perch, they'll mill around that live bait. It'll help concentrate that wolf pack as it comes across the flat and the big perch will get on there. Sometimes when we know we have a perch hooked on the tip down, we won't even pull that tip down. We'll double drill the hole next to it. And then as that fish is circulating down there, he's creating a frenzy, he's creating activity. We'll come out with a jigging rod out of the shack. We'll put it in the second hole, two, three feet to the side of that. And we'll grab eight or 10 easy biters while uh, all that activity is going on down there. When the activity on the jig rod wanes, boom. We set the hook on the tip down, pull that perch or perhaps a double up, take them off, rehook it, set it back down in position, and we're back in business and ready to go again. That's a simple way to get into the tip down, uh, tip down business, and uh, that's a super rig, makes it easy, and that's the best way that we've found to rig those things and have them ready each and every day when you go on the ice. I'm Captain Bill Safe the Third. That's your tip down tip. Let's go back to the action. Oh, that tip down's going right there, buddy boy. Want me to set up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Got him. Oh, get the line tight. Stay right over the middle of it. All right, peel the line away. When you take the line, throw it away from the hole. That's it, so it doesn't get tangled in the line that's coming up. Oh, easy, 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 easy. Slide them. Nice job, buddy boy. <laughs> Look at that pike, dude. Perfect. Good job, buddy. Maybe your dad will help you get them off. Yeah, I'll help you with that. I think we're going to send that one back. That's really a nice picture of that guy, though. He's a beauty. Yep, not a bad fish. Right in the corner of the mouth, Good too. fish. That's where we want him. He took you down through the salad, dude. He did. Yeah. Little guy. What do you think about letting him go? Nice fish right there. You want to hold Get a picture with him or? Yeah. Hold him right up, hold him right up for me so I can see him. Look at this fish, guys, right here. He is just a dandy. Well done, young man. Let me get my camera out and I'll take a picture, okay? Got a tip down hammered right here. Alex, you gonna take this fish? Yeah. Come on, buddy boy. There's a good one. Hit him. Oh, oh, okay, buddy. Hang on to it. Yep. Hang on to it. Don't let that rod. Hold on. Gonna work around you here. Yep, strip that line, strip that line back towards your father. That's it. Nice job, buddy. You feel heavy? Very. Very heavy. Peel that line back away from you. That's it, so it doesn't get tangled. You're doing good, pal. Doing a good job. Be easy on him. Okay. Remember what we were talking about. When we get his head up here, and, it get, and the head comes ooh, easy, 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 nice and smooth. Let's take him off. Yeah, let him run, let him run. That's that a boy. Keep the line from touching the edge of the hole. And when his head comes through, you're gonna slide him, right? Oh. Don't even be afraid to reach in and grab him under the gill and pull him right out with your bare hand. Oh, easy now, watch that hook. Here, oh, big fish, big fish. Holy smokes, dude, it's a good that's fish. a big fish. Yep. Randy, this is a big one right here, buddy. Yeah. It's the biggest pike I've ever seen. Nice and easy. This is the biggest pike he's ever seen. This is a stud fish. This is the one. This is the one for all the marbles, kid. Nice and smooth. <laughs> Uncle Willie's even getting excited on this one. Look at the size of that dude. Easy, easy, easy. We gotta get his head up here. Yeah, so pull it back. Yeah, you're doing perfect. Okay, now gill him, Tommy. Oh, look at that. Look at that fish. That is a stud fish.
Mm -hmm. Randy, you got pliers? There's no two ways around it, man. That is a stud fish. Wow. Stud fish. Yeah, put your right hand right where your dad's is. Muckle onto him hard. Okay. All right, look at this fish. What a beautiful, beautiful northern pike. Buddy, boy, proud of you, kid. And we've been slaying the gills over there in the town, haven't we? But a fish like that, that's worth coming out and taking the tip down for. Played him perfectly, buddy, to perfection. Good job. Congratulations, buddy. Awesome. A great fish indeed. Congratulations, Alex. We hope you enjoyed today's edition of this video, taking a look at tip downs, the creation of tip downs, and how we utilize them with the BSO team to take not only jumbo perch, but some nice examples of northern pike as well. For Tom Tucker, Frank Howard, Captain Randy Pound, Bob Helms, and myself, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to share a day on the ice with the Hardwater Ice Guides and the BSO team, feel free to contact us at 315-771-3514. We'd love to walk the ice with you. I'm Captain Bill Safe III. Thanks for watching.